Okay, hello and welcome to Dead by Daylight Character Spotlights. I'm here with Mrs. Superhands. Say hello, Mrs. Superhands. Hello, Mrs. Superhands. And today we're going to be talking about Meg Thomas. She's an easy survivor and one of the first survivors that were ever released with the game. So, her backstory. Perhaps it was her mother that had instilled the fierce streak in her, or maybe it was her father that left them when she was a baby. Meg excelled at schoolwork, but she was off the rails. Fortunately, an athletics coach encouraged her to channel her misspent energy on the track. She motivated herself into becoming a high school star and earned a scholarship to college. When her mother fell ill, Meg decided to give up her chance at college to care for the woman who had raised her. One summer's day, on a long run deep in the woods, Meg vanished. Search as they did, they never found her body. Dun, dun, dun. So, Sporty Meg, as always, has three teachable perks. The first of which is Quick and Quiet. You do not make as much noise as others when quickly vaulting over obstacles or hiding in lockers. The vault and hide actions noise detection and audio range is reduced by 100%. This effect can only be triggered once every 30 seconds. Very handy in a chase. Very handy in a chase. Because sometimes you might turn a corner and then jump a window because you're still running but they've just lost you and then they find you again with the sound notification mm -hmm. so anything that um that gets rid of that is is definitely worth having yeah very very cool i mean it's countered by certain perks like um i'm all ears for example oh, yeah but, but it's uh, it's very very useful and i can't tell you how many times i've been running from a killer and just leapt into a locker, just rounded a corner, jumped in a locker, and they've thought I've gone through a window or round another corner or whatever, mm. and they just run straight past you, and you're gone. It's such a good perk, and it combos really well with some other perks, which we will discuss later. Next up, Sprint Burst. When starting to run, break into a sprint at 150% of your normal running speed for a maximum of 3 seconds. Causes the exhausted status effect for 60 seconds. Sprint Burst cannot be used while exhausted. You do not recover from the exhausted status effect while running. Very useful perk. It affects your playstyle a lot, because you can't be sprinting between generators, etc. Yeah, but true. If you're sat on a jenny, smashing it away, you can wait that extra few seconds until the killer gets close and then you're gone like a rocket. And it's so useful for that initial moment when you get spotted to try and break line of sight and finish that chase before it starts. Very strong perk, this one. Yeah, it does make all the difference. I know that when I first started out, I used Sprint Burst a couple of times and then I'd run somewhere or run the shortest way and go oh no I've used my sprint burst so it is the kind of one that you have to be aware that you're going to use it that you have to be aware of when it's active when you're exhausted and your actions that like if you don't need to run you need to not be running because otherwise it's a waste yeah. and if you run and are exhausted and then the killer appears you're then not going to benefit from that perk at all Yes, that's true. I mean, it does really affect your playstyle, like I say. You'll see Megs just walking around between generators, and there's an argument to be made that, well, if the killer's on the other side of the map, then you could be sprinting, so this perk is actually hamstringing you. But swings and roundabouts, I think, for its utility, it's quite strong. It's not my favourite exhaustion perk, but it is a very easy-to-use perk. Yes. Okay, so Meg's third and final signature perk is Adrenaline. You are fueled by unexpected energy while on the verge of escape. Instantly heal one health state and sprint at 150% of your normal running speed for 5 seconds when the exit gates are powered. Adrenaline is on hold if you are disabled at the moment it should take effect and will activate when freed. Adrenaline will wake you up if you are asleep when it triggers. Adrenaline ignores the exhausted status effect causes the exhausted status effect for 60 seconds and you do not recover from the exhausted status effect when running. Really meta perk for a long time this was. It's it's very very strong and it can win you games or rather get you out of the game. I don't think it's tremendous personally because you're playing 90% of the game with three perks this only activates in the end game and you've got to get there for that utility but if you get there it's very very strong 
like you're, it's the trade off for that late game power spike. It's very situational, but in those situations, it's amazing. So it's on hold if you're disabled. So if you're hooked when the the exit gates power, and then you're saved, you are instantly healed, and you can and you have a sprint burst away from the hook. Um, I've played this perk before, and been in a chase with the killer, and one hit away from being downed. But then the exit gates have been powered, and it's got me back to healthy state. So again, it's just one of those perks that, as long as you're in the right situation, it's unbelievably handy. But only if you get to that point. If you die beforehand, you're playing with three perks. Yeah. Um, I've been in situations before where I've been downed, and the killer's been after a fellow survivor, and someone's activated the exit gates jobs are good you stand back up you're gone it's interesting also that if you're exhausted when the exit gates are powered adrenaline will still proc it will reset the timer on your exhaustion but you can still get that heal and that sprint burst which is really nice however it does mean that you're not getting another sprint burst for another minute after the exit gates are powered so you have to capitalize on it when it goes off Okay, so here we are in a lobby with Meg, ready to try and get the Adept Meg achievement. We have level 1 of all of her signature perks, so we've got Quick and Quiet, which will be propped once every 30 seconds if we want it to. We've got Sprint Burst, which is going to give us Exhausted for 60 seconds, and we can sprint for 3 seconds. And we've got Adrenaline, so when that fires off we get 5 seconds of Sprint and a Heal. Obviously, blank force perk slot because we're doing the adept achievement, so we can only use the character's signature perks. Okay, so as the more eagle eyed among you will have noticed, my Meg has jumped up to level 37, and that is because we've been having some sub optimal outcomes when trying to do this challenge. So, <laughs> yes, that. So, I've spent a load of blood points in the blood web, got a few new perks, a few new items, so we're coming at this afresh. I'm going to bring in an Alex's toolbox, because why not? And let's sabotage things without the killer knowing, and let's make them stay sabotaged longer, and let's have some Amaranth, because I would really like to escape and get some bonus blood points for doing so. Same. Although I am taking in Vigo's jar of salty lips for luck. Nice. Colden Farm. Mm. It's Billy territory, boys. Oh, yeah. Oh, wasted my sprint burst again. I've been playing Meg for several hours filming this, and I have still not overcome the urge to instantly start sprinting around the edge of the map. Because if someone's trying to loop, he's coming back. Put down a trap, I assume. Nice. 
No, guys, guys, you did not bring him this way. Days are wasted. I must bring those again. Whenever I play with exhaustion perks, usually I play with manually triggered ones. So just sprinting a short distance, I, I don't even think about it. I just waste it. There's been a couple of times today where it's gone off and absolutely saved me, like when a brother went for several of us on a jenny and I just spread first to the wall and didn't catch me. how he hit me when I was literally behind him but cool. Oh, was a bit laggy. Okay so where I'm about to get hooked there is the generator right next to me he kicked it but um, I was so close to finishing it. Literally on the opposite side of the map unfortunately. Okay. I'll use my handy dandy sprinklers to close the distance. The other person looks like they're coming. They prove themselves to be a dick, so. They just. Yeah, that's it. Don't run towards me, because that's a dick move. I'm running towards you. <laughs> You're fine. Any I didn't touch? see him put any down. Touch off on the Jenny first. Cool. <laughs> 
Nearby. Oh, in this in this field where we are now. Yes. Because oh. most of this map is cool. Oh, he's been back here and reset this trap again. Are you sure? I mean, we needed to be able to escape from that pallet. He's back that way. Of course. Of course. Oh. Right. Where is it? Where is you can't break it under him because he'll just hit you and you'll go down. Literally stood right next to him. Are you serious? I'm at a, the other door that's not nearby. He's giving up. Yeah, I know. I can't move. I'll just see if I'm like, to leave, so. Yeah, I'm getting this other door open. just in front of the thing. <laughs> I've killed people like that before. When they've been teabagging and stuff. It's like, well, maybe you shouldn't be M, should you? Why is the guy who got camped literally said GG? <laughs> Weird. So there we are. Adept Meg completed. Now, what's Meg's play style? What is her intended character role? Well, in my eyes, Meg is an evader. She's designed to be chased by the killer and get away. She's designed to be self-sufficient, kind of a lone wolf who can lead the killer away from the other survivors to buy them time to play the objectives. So in terms of Meg's kit for fulfilling that role, how can we make this build better? Well. We haven't got all the perks available on Meg, she's only level 37, I've not maxed her out. But from what I've got available, I really like Inner Strength, because you're always on the move, you're cleansing totems and you've got that ability to heal yourself when you're not necessarily with your team. It's a really nice compliment to someone who's got that Lone Wolf playstyle, who can run away from the killer, get him to follow you away from your teammates, maybe take a hit, escape, then heal yourself back up before you have to try and find them again. Next up, Quick and Quiet. I really like this because it synergizes really well with other perks and it's just a really useful piece of kit that I think is an underrated perk in general. 
the amount of times that I've broken chases with killers for free just by doing something that they wouldn't expect. It's, it's just a brilliant book. It works really well. And the fact that it can trigger every 30 seconds, it's brilliant. And that's at level one as well, uh -huh. which is really good. And that complements inner strength really nicely because if you're, um, as long as you've cleansed a totem, if you're injured and manage to jump in a locker and they don't notice, not only are you hiding and breaking that chase, you're also healing yourself. Yeah, and so, even though this is only level two in a strength, you've got to be in there for nine seconds before you fully heal. Like, at level three, it's even less time. Yeah. Really complimentary. Agreed. Next up, Sprint Burst. Really good piece of kit. However, it doesn't fit my playstyle very well, and I always forget it and use it when I don't mean to. With that in mind, my go-to exhaustion burst is live, which is exactly the same stats at level 1, except it only triggers when you vault something, so you can manually activate it to put that extra distance between you and a killer. You vault a pallet, you vault a window, and you get that extra distance. I like that better. I know Mrs. Superhands, you're a big fan of Balance, balance landing. landing. Yeah, yeah, Balance Landing is my preferred one because... Um, I don't know, I think I just, in my general playstyle, I don't really tend to vault so much when I'm in a chase, whereas I might run up a hill and then jump off it, or I might jump off a ledge, um, and then it just gives you that, that burst, and particularly considering when you don't have balance landing, you have that delay when you jump off of something mm. where, that the killer doesn't have, so it gets rid of that. I think some killers rely on that, um, that pause that you have that they don't have to get you as they're coming down but with balanced landing it just gives you that little speed boost and a lot of the time I find that actually they, because they don't expect it, they're like oh my god where they go mm. so it's a good way for me to escape Yeah, as someone who plays a lot of killer, if I see someone go up a high obstacle I'm rubbing my hands together because I think they're going to drop off and stagger and I'm going to make up a lot of time here mm. So, and, and seeing balanced landing used isn't that common either yeah. to be honest um i really like live i like it more than sprint burst and because it does a similar thing i'm going to swap that piece of kit out adrenaline i really am on the fence about this because like i said before it's a big end game power spike yeah but you're playing with three perks for the rest of the trial and you might not get any use out of it even if you do get to the end game, like in that game that we just played, I was fully healed and I was nowhere near the killer. Adrenaline propped when we dropped the last generator and it made absolutely no difference to my game. You ran a little bit faster for a short period of time. I wasn't even running, that's the thing. I was working out where the exit gates were and trying to plan my route. Yeah. I think as well, um, yeah, like you say, with Adrenaline, it's so, so good as long as you get to that key point. If you don't get to that key point, then it's just a waste. It does tie in very well with the whole lone wolf, I'm gonna take care of myself and distract the killer kind of playstyle, but it's it's not for me. Another thing that's really useful to consider with Meg is Dance With Me, is a cape perk. So when you perform a fast vault or jump out of the locker really fast, you don't leave any scratch marks for three seconds. That's pretty awesome. You get a live proc where you jump over something, get that sprint burst, and don't leave any scratch marks for three seconds. So you're going 150% of sprint speed with no scratch marks. That can really bamboozle the killer. Yeah. Same thing with quick and quiet. Like, if you jump into a locker with quick and quiet and hide from the killer, and then you burst out because the killer's coming back, you can avoid them with Dance With Me. I think something that combos equally well with quick and quiet is head on. So that allows you to burst out of a locker once you've been in it for three seconds. And if the killer's within the AOE of the perk, they get slapped and it kind of dazes them as though they've been hit with decisive strike. Now, if you're in a chase with a killer and you run into a locker with quick and quiet, nine times out of 10, they'll run past, do a double take, turn around, and think where could they have gone and often they'll check the locker if you combo 
quick and quiet, with head on. You can jump into a locker, and in that time it takes them to run past, think, wait a minute, turn around and come back, you then burst out and stun them again, if that happens. So it's a really nice little synergy. Yeah, if you use lockers and you're quite confident in running into lockers during chases, it's a fantastic uh, pack to use, definitely, and works really well with quick and quiet. I personally, when I play, don't really use lockers very much when I'm in a chase, but that's just because, in terms of chase, that's the area in which I'm not as confident in the game. I'm much more of an um, altruistic, healing people, playing the objective kind of person, um, being chased by the killer and extending that chase for a long time or bamboozling them, as you can do with these perks, isn't really my forte. But having watched you play it, where you're a bit more confident in doing that, um, it's really effective. The thing is though, with head-on, you do get exhausted. And if you're already exhausted from using live, you're not going to get a proc of this. And for that reason, I'm not putting it on this build. Mm. Good idea. You don't get two belts of exhaustion for each perk, do you? It's all no, in it one. The debuff doesn't stack, yeah. If you're exhausted from one, you can't use the other. Yeah. Um, so if one of them's got a cooldown of 30 seconds, but the other one's got a 60 second cooldown and you've used them both, you're going to have a perk that you can't use for an extra 30 seconds. So it's just something to bear in mind. If you're going to use multiple exhaustion perks, you have to take that into consideration. Yeah, you have to pick your moment to use the one that you need and then be mindful that all of them are switched off. Yeah. One last thing to mention, again, Lone Wolf style, I really like Will Make It because the idea that you lure the killer away, you are in and out, quick and quiet, if you'll pardon the pun, I think it's really nice to just run in, get that save, do the quick heal, then disappear again, take the killer off to the other side of the map. Yeah. Um, for this particular build, I'm going to leave it as it is, but it's definitely worth mentioning because I want to get those live, dance with me, quick and quiet procs. And if we jump through a window with live, we get that sprint burst for three seconds, moving at 150% of max move speed. We leave no scratch marks for three seconds, and the vault through the window itself is silent. So that's a really nice way of losing the killer, particularly in tight cornered maps. Yeah. You can just disappear and it will really throw some killers, particularly the inexperienced ones, because they rely on scratch marks a lot. In my mind, I think Meg is about making space for other people to do the generator. Meg is okay. about being the distraction to okay. allow other people to play the objective. Obviously she'll play the objective if the killer's not pressuring, but I think with the kit that she's got, it's really nice to be the one who lures the killer away. Okay, so we're being brave. Let's have a look at our item inventory. We'll take a med kit, because we're probably going to take some hits, and we'll add some charges to it. And let's take some Sweet William, because we're planning on getting a lot of if it all goes well. Let's do this. Woo! Auto Haven Wreckers. The only thing that's going to get wrecked is this killer. Haha! -ha! Whoa! I'm the obsession. Yep. Oh, and I. Oh, it's another trapper. What even? So I was just walking along the middle of a map and didn't notice me. Oh, prove myself. Oh, jeez. So much. Such a good arm. Oh, do you know what? I'm allowed to look at this up. Right, thank you. Just channeling everything. Go, go, go! Why are you making the noise? He's in the killer shack currently. Well, he was in the killer shack. Oh, it's bright pink ace! Hey, bright pink ace. He doesn't have to look at the It's a boobar! Yes, I know, I told you, 300 years ago! No, I mean, a boobar has arrived. I see. Okay. 
It's a booba! Oh my god! He's oh he knows! He knows! Chili and Frank fans! Get out the way! Oh my god! So you can more effectively notify the killer of our presence! I just, I was standing there and I couldn't touch it because you were in the way. And what way is he coming from? The killer shark is chasing you. Oh. Andy? Chili, but he doesn't have bitter mama, so that's good. I'm just gonna go skidoosh. Ha ha. And quickly jump into a locker without loud noise notifications because of quick and quiet, which is amazing! Boys, uh, I'm behind you. That's nice. 
might want to not be. <laughs> Wait. He's not near me, if that helps. Big confusion. He's coming back. Was I just close enough so that it didn't fuck? Possibly. I mean, that's what I was going for. Yeah, he's Stop coming around, you bitch. Wow, oh, if I was that cat, I'd be fuming! Oh my god. 